doing? What? what are you doing? I am panning for gold. I've been here for days and there's not even an ounce of gold in here. Not an ounce. Oh, I'm not surprised. You're not going to find any gold here. Why not? Alan, because everybody knows rivers have got energy. Yes. Right? And they use that energy to transport materials downstream. Yes. From the big boulders, the stones, the pebbles, moves downstream. All the large boulders crash against each other and bash, and they get smaller. Yes. And at this stage, all you're going to find are pebbles. Yes. So, on that note, run the titles. Welcome to the river. Pretty cool spot. Yeah, isn't it? So what's going on here with the river and the rocks? Okay, so this is a big, amazing looking waterfall and it kind of works together. The river and the landscape, they work together to create amazing places like this. Yeah. So as the water comes over the ground, it meets different types of rock. And this rock that we have here is a very hard rock and that's why it still stays there. But what would have been here in this space? In this space, yeah. would have been a much softer rock. Oh, okay. So that means that whenever the water hits it, it erodes it away okay. and carries it all downstream. That okay. creates a bit of a drop. And then as the water gets a bit more speed, as it drops over, it digs away more and more and more. And eventually you end up with this waterfall because all the soft rock has been moved away here. So Paul, you were talking about hard and soft rock. What's yep. the difference? Um, and what's this? Okay, so this is actually a hard rock. This okay. is called basalt. Okay. It's a black rock. We get this a lot over the northeast of Antrim, right. in North Ireland, and it, it's volcanic. Okay. It used to be lava. Okay. So whenever you see volcanoes erupting on the television, um, this is what this this is where this rock has come from. Okay. It was once a volcanic eruption in this area, and it formed this wow. hard, hard rock. Okay. So lava becomes hard rock. But then there are other rocks that are formed in different ways. And how they form and the chemistry of the rocks, yeah. that, that affects how hard rocks become. So as we move downstream from this lovely waterfall here, we actually end up going over a different rock. It's a white rock called chalk. And that's a bit softer because it was formed in an ocean and it was all compressed down. And then beyond that again, we have another rock which is softer again. Yeah. It's, it's a mudstone. And those rocks... Now we saw that at the uh, Marble Arch yeah. last time. Yeah, yeah so okay. the chalk, we saw, we saw limestone, yeah. and it can get dissolved out, and water can actually affect that a lot easier. Whereas this hard rock, as we go down the river, you'll actually see this a lot the whole way down. Even though we're away from this main block of rock, yeah. you'll see that because it's so hard, the water doesn't really erode it that easily. Okay. Well. Now we've come down the river and yep. we're in this lovely wee meander here, this lovely mm -hmm. glen. Yeah. Um, but we've still got these big boulders, Paul, and then there's these... Good spot, yeah. Yeah, there's these other sort of lumpy bits. And then there's this gravel. What's yep. going on here? Okay, so the river has carried all of this stuff downstream. Okay. And the, the rock which we're on here, we know, because we can see it in different parts of the river, is, a, is an orange mudstone. Okay. Okay, so these dark grey black rocks that we have here, they're not from here. They've been carried from the whole way, the right at the top of the river where we were, where we were previously, uh -huh. and carried the whole way down here. So this possibly was a big, big boulder that's been broken up, but you can see how big it is still. Yeah. And that's because this rock is really hard. Yeah. Even the action as it rumbles through the river isn't sufficient to break it up. Whereas whenever we come down the river, we come on to chalk and then this mudstone that run, and we have examples of that here. So we have some 
some yeah. of the white chalk we can see just lying around here. Uh -huh. Okay, so we'll come over that. And it's that's, everywhere. Yeah, but there's there's not as much of it as the grey rock, and the yes. reason for that is because it's softer, so yeah. it's more likely to get eroded away and turned into smaller and smaller and smaller particles. Okay. And then we get right down to even the mudstone. Wow. And it's really soft. It's amazing to find a bit this size even. And if I just, you know, wet it a wee bit here, you it's can melting. see. It's melting. Yeah, it, it looks like chocolate. Yeah. It looks like you're just rubbing chocolate onto it. Mm, um, and nice. that's how soft this is. That's so unreal. as the water passes over this and the basalt knocks it, just turns it into fine, fine sediment that then gets carried way, way down the river. As this ends up in the river, if you had a chunk of this and a chunk of basalt, yes. this will get turned into small particles a lot quicker than the basalt will. Okay. And you'll find this basalt uh, rock much further downstream. And as we as we move down the river, eventually you'll just not know that there's any evidence of mudstone um, in the river. Paul, this then really what we're talking about is erosion, yep. right? What have you got in your hand? What, what are you doing? So I've got a wee experiment for you. Okay. To try and help you understand what goes on in the okay. river and, and the links between the motion of the river, the flow of the river, and the sediment that it carries. So in this jar, we have stones. Yeah. Okay, so they're quite big. Okay. Where'd you get those Some stones? stones. They're, they're from my garden. Okay. I could have actually picked them up from here. There's lots <laughs> of lovely stones here, but these are from my garden, okay? And then in this jar, I have some sand. So the difference between this jar and this jar is that the particles, and this one are really big, you can see them with your yeah. naked eye, but in this one, the particles are quite small. Yeah. Okay, so if you think okay. about being on a beach and all the tiny grains of sand, okay, that's the size of the particles in that. Now, if I shake them both up really vigorously, this is to imagine like it's the, the flow of water in the river. Yeah. And then I stop them. What oh, can you wow. see happen there? So the water's really clear here. The stones have just stopped still, whereas yep. in there, you can see the sand still swirling around, and the really yep. tiny particles are still swirling around. Yeah. It's still cloudy. It's exactly it. So the the amount that the material or the sediment gets carried down the river is all to do with the size of the particle. Okay. The bigger it is, the heavier it is, and the more energy is required to carry it down. So if you've got a slow moving river, it's only going to carry the really fine material down the river, and the bigger stuff is going to stay behind. So that's why at the top of a river, you have lots of boulders and stones. But as you get further and further down the river, you start to get more gravel and sand and then silt and then clay right down at the end of the river. So whenever it flows into a lake or the sea and the speed of the water just drops dramatically, then all that material just drops right down to the bottom of the lake. And that's why you have muds at the bottom of lakes, it's because all that fine material gets the whole way down to the far end. Which is also what we talked about in series one, which was the deltas at the end of the river going exactly out into it. the sea. Brilliant. Yeah, that's exactly it. So I've come into the kitchen again, not to do science this time, but to do some cookery. Um, first things first in the kitchen when you're doing some cookery, be prepared, get your stuff out. I've got my dry ingredients and my wet ingredients, and I've just washed my hands. So I'm all set and ready to go. Let me just go through the ingredients for today because we're making some rock cakes. Because we're looking at geology, we're having a look at the rocks and how rocks affect the river. So we thought we'd make some rock cakes. 225 grams of self-raising flour, 140 grams of some chocolate chips, 115 grams of butter. Now I've had that butter sitting out at room temperature so it's nice and warm. It's not, if it came straight from the fridge it would be rock hard and I couldn't work with it. I've got some baking powder. I'm going to use two teaspoons of that. I have an egg. I have 50 grams of castor sugar and I have a wee touch of milk here to put into it to make sure that it's the right consistency. I also have a huge big baking bowl, a wooden spoon, a teaspoon, a baking tray, and some baking parchment or greaseproof paper. Let's get started. I even have a hat, look at my lovely hat. Proper chef's hat right there, gorgeous. So I'm gonna start off with my dry ingredients and I'm gonna get my 225 grams of self-raising flour, put it into my big bowl like that. 
and I'm going to add in my 115 grams of butter into it. And we're going to rub this in, okay? So we're going to try and make it look like breadcrumbs. So you get your hands in, and what you're doing is you're just moving it between your fingers like that, rubbing the flour into the butter, just like that. That's that mixed, it didn't take very long. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna add in two teaspoons of baking powder. And we're gonna spread that over the top, one and two, like that. We're gonna add in our 140 grams of chocolate chips, although Gardner's our cameraman and I can see Gardner adding, you know, eyeing some of these up. He's not getting any just yet. I am. Oh, mm -mm. I in the chocolate chips and 50 grams of caster sugar. Lovely. Give that a quick wee mix round. And then I'm going to add in our wet ingredients. Going to add in one egg, like that. Give that a wee mix. And then I'm going to add in a wee touch of milk because we want this to be like a dough. We don't want it to be too wet and sloppy. We want it to be, um, we don't want it to be too dry either, but we do want it to be nice and moldable, a bit like a bread dough or a sh um, shortbread dough. So you can see how it's all starting to come together there. So mix that all up until it's like a dough in the middle of your bowl. So there we go all mixed together and it's a nice dough, not too sloppy, not too wet. Because what we want to do now is we want to take a little lump of it, like a rack. <laughs> and we don't want to make it too round. We just want to make a lump like that and put it onto our bacon tray. I'm going to try and make as many of those as I can. There's another good one. Number two. I was able to make 10 rock buns there. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put these into the oven at 170 degrees centigrade or 150 if you've got a fan oven um, and those are going to be in there for 15 minutes or until they go kind of a golden brown that's when you really want to get them when they're lovely and golden brown okay so there's only one other thing to do when you've got your rock cakes in the oven and that's dance <laughs> Stephen, these are ready. Do you want one? C Gardener, do you want one? You want Good man. Right now, I have to tell you a wee joke. Two chimpanzees in the kitchen and they're cooking and one chimpanzee goes, ooh, ooh, ah, ah, ah. And the other chimpanzee says, I watch those are hot. Now, <laughs> <laughs> careful, they are hot. Right, Gardener. Here you go. Get one of those. Nice. Mm. What do you think? Gorgeous, aren't they? Mm. <laughs> That's a wee rock cake. Mm, delicious. Uh -uh. Five minutes to make it, 15 minutes to cook it. Are you eating the rest of yourself? Yeah. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to um, uh, Cookery Corner. Alan has just made the most delightful rock cakes, and I was wondering if you could write down the instructions. Begin with the ingredients, and then the first action and second action, right to the moment when they come out of the oven. Aren't words fun?
and for today we are going to do a little bit of rock painting and the equipment you need for this is fairly basic as you can see I have collected some nice rocks some nice rocks actually from the river the other thing we need is a pencil we need a little paintbrush and we also need some paints now the paints that work best on the type of rock are acrylic paints but you might also be able to use some markers colored markers too but for today i am using acrylic paints and i've thought very very hard about what i'm going to do today on my rock and i've decided to do a shark and i'm going to start by drawing some features onto my rock so I'm going to choose this rock, I'm going to take my pencil and all I'm going to do, it's pretty simple, I'm going to start off by just drawing like a circle, a circular shape and I'm going to draw the shark's mouth and yeah. Now this is fairly rough. One other thing I'm going to add on is something that's infamous about sharks, their nice sharp teeth. I'm going to add on a few teeth. Razor sharp teeth. Now we all know we don't find sharks in rivers. Okay, sharks are saltwater animals, but I just thought it would be nice to do a shark today. So there we have it, we have the drawing done and next step is to add some paint. Okay, and three colours of paint that we are using are simply black, red and white. So all we need, three colours. So I'm going to start by doing inside the shark's mouth, okay? So I'm going to go for a nice red. Okay, so we've now done the inside of the shark's mouth. Now we're just going to get a little bit of white. Lovely white. And the outer part of the mouth is going to be like. Takes a lot of concentration. So that's our second part done. We've got the red mouth, and then we've got the outer part in white. Now, shark's eyes, that's the next thing we're gonna do with shark's eyes. We're gonna use the black shark eyes. So we've got the black. This eye. Looks like a friendly shark. And there we have our shark's eyes. Boys and girls, it's better to let that stage dry before we add the teeth on, okay? So we'll just give it a bit of time for it to dry. And there we have the paint dry. So no shark would be complete without its teeth. So I'm gonna take a dip of the white paint. A lot of white paint on there. And I'm gonna try now to draw some lovely short teeth. These triangular shape. Here's your teeth. And there we have it. One scary looking shark. Rocks, rocks, rocks. Seal, seal, seal. How are you living without rocks? Get your rock multi-tool here today. So much better than bone and sticks. We have all of the rocks, hard and soft. Let us rock your world 
We will, we will rock you. Rock knife. Rock guitar. Rock paper scissors. Rock music. Rock blender. Welcome to the Stone Age. And that's another episode in the can. What did we learn today? Well, we learned that rivers and rock have a really interesting relationship. We also learned that rocks can be classed as hard rock or soft rock, and the way that the river treats them, treats them in very different ways. We also learned that rock creates lots of interesting features all the way along right out to its end. Now, join us next time when we will be uh, on an adventure looking at some of the fish that come up our rivers.